Welcome to Bound by Books, a podcast of authors talking all things books. And today I'm joined by my co-host, Sherry Hayes. Hi, Sherry. How are you? I'm good, Tina. How are you today? I'm doing well, getting excited for our topic. I think it's one that our listeners are really going to enjoy and have a lot of questions about. So I hope that they'll leave them in the comments down below on our YouTube channel. And we're going to be talking about yeah. digital advertising. So Sherry, I lo- yes, love I think- to start with you and your new book. <laughs> I know that you have had a doozy with the digital advertising. So first, tell us about your new book, and then let's hear some of your challenges on the advertising for it. Okay, so my new book is His Forbidden Kiss, and as the title implies, it's a little on the sexier side of things. In fact, it's very, very sexy. Uh, It falls into the erotic romance category, so if you're looking for something hot and steamy, that would be the book to uh, go to. But from a digital advertising standpoint, it does create a big challenge for me, uh, as do my other books, really all of my books, but specifically my sexier books, which all contain uh, BDSM content, because a lot of digital advertisers do not like the sexy content. Uh, you, You pretty much have to, well, you don't have to, I guess, but um, you really, you know, your cover is your is your stop sign. That that is that is the first thing that a reader sees. It's most of the time it's what makes a reader decide whether they're going to click or not click to read your blurb and to find out more information and potentially buy the book. Mm-hmm. So you have to have a cover that is reflective of the content of the story. And if the content of the story is lots of sexy times, <laughs> then your cover kind of needs to show that there's lots of sexy times uh, in the story. And that means that it's not overly advertiser friendly, yeah. um, especially when it, like Amazon, especially is really, really harsh on that. Uh, not just with covers, but also with blurbs. Mm -hmm. Like if you have the word alpha in the blurb or dom or submissive, uh, BDSM, any of those keywords, they, they blacklist it from advertising. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually had a book, which isn't even one of my sexier ones. They were perfectly fine with the cover. My boys in blue, it was, it's an anthology. It has two of my uh, law enforcement romances in it, contemporary, adult contemporary. So yeah, they're sexy times, but they're not graphic. Um, so normally it would be completely within the lines, guidelines of, okay, uh, it does have Manchester on the cover, but nothing again, too overly graphic, still things, but I have the word alpha yep. in the blurb. Yep. And that just, boom, it sends same it thing. off. So same thing happens to me. It happened with aliens captive and aliens mate, where I had to, mm-hmm. again, two Manchester covers, um, alien base, yep. but still Manchester on the cover. And that was not the issue. The issue was I had alpha in the blurb. And once I removed the word alpha from the blurb, I, I was able to am- advertise on Amazon again. It's Rare and, and the yeah, keywords uh, it's, that are it's crazy now blacklisted are changing, but they change continually on Amazon. So Amazon kinds of yeah. adds new ones, and we'll get into Amazon as a platform to advertise. But Sherry, how do you how do you advertise your book then, and kind of get around this issue of not being able to advertise on certain platforms? What do you do <laughs> instead? Well, um, I utilize Facebook, which Facebook advertising does does allow that. And I will say this is probably one of the most important things that I will, I would say, if you're going to do Facebook advertising and you are advertising a sexier book or a book that has a sexier cover on it, if your book cover would normally be allowed on Facebook, which the guidelines are usually like a PG 13 type content. I mean, you can't show, 
you know, you can't show obvious body parts that are supposed to be covered. We'll leave it at that. Um, but as long as you're not showing any type of explicit content on your cover, you don't have any bits showing that shouldn't be showing, um, you, they will approve ads mm -hmm. for those book covers. Okay. So you can, you can't do that. However, their bots will occasionally flag those. Case in point, I have an ad that has been running for close to three years now for my slave, my uh, my book Slave. Um, there's nothing wrong with the cover. It has a picture of a girl kneeling on it with a guy standing over her. Both of them are clothed. I mean, there's nothing explicit implied, about not the explicit. cover. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, but I actually, I've had them, re I've had them reject it once when I first tried to put the, the ad up and I had them reject it actually about a year ago, uh, when they were doing some changes in their system. Mm -hmm. However, with that happens, you can actually go into the business help function in Facebook, get, you have to kind of dig a little bit, but they actually have a place where you can message a Facebook representative. So you can actually talk oh, to a live great. human being. You have to wait wow. a little bit. You can talk to a live human being <laughs> and explain the situation. I know it's shocking because it trying to get a hold of a live human being is, is work. Um, but you can talk to a live human being, chat with a live human being and explain to them that this is a book cover and that book covers are allowed per Facebook guidelines and they can actually accelerate that up and dispute it, file a dispute for you. And every time I've had it approved. That's amazing. So that's really great for um, people there, to know that that's there are great. ways around it. You just have to work <laughs> a little bit. It's still frustrating, but it does work. Um, and that brings us to actually, do you utilize Facebook ads for your books? I do. I think that's a that's a good jumping off point for explaining the different types of advertising platforms as well, because we have a pay per click or pay per impression type of digital advertising. And that is Facebook, Amazon and BookBub. BookBub, most people know for their featured deals. That's a separate thing. We're talking specifically mm -hmm. about their pay per clicks or pay per impressions. Um, so those are the three big platforms right. for it. So with Facebook, I uh, have used Facebook before. I haven't used it recently. I kind of go back and forth with Facebook because for the small press side of things, I do utilize Facebook more because most of our titles are wide, meaning they're not exclusive to any one retail platform. Whereas my books right now, I'm mm -hmm. concentrating on my sci-fi series and those are exclusive to Amazon at the moment through Kindle Unlimited. So I do concentrate more on Amazon ads for that, but I have used Facebook mm. ads before. For me, I haven't been able to get as much traction on Facebook ads in terms of like long-term um, advertising on the platform. I have a little more success with Amazon. I feel like Facebook, I, I personally, and this is other people have different successes with this, but I personally have had to change them over more often. I wonder, do you find, well, you said you had one running for three years on the same book. And it's still doing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's still it's still doing well. I run about um, I run about anywhere from ten cents to twelve cents per click. That's great. Um, which is decent, yeah. especially for a really long running ad. Um, however, I will qualify that to say that I find free works better with Facebook ads. Mm, so that's good to know. Uh, advertising advertising your free first in series, advertising your, um, your newsletter magnet, mm -hmm. those type of things where you're basically offering the freebie that will lead to other books. Like for example, my slave, my book slave, it's the first book in a five book serial series about the same couple. So the first four books in that series end on cliffhangers. So if the person you know, I'm giving, I'm basically saying, here, read this book for this first book for free. And, and then, you know, you. <laughs> even if, even if, 
you know, even if like 25% of those people who, you know, who download that go on to read the second and third and fourth, I mean, they're paying for the second through the fifth book. Yeah. So for me, from an advertising standpoint, it's worth it for me to spend the money on the advertising for that first book for free. Um, I have tried doing uh, advertising on like new releases and stuff. Mm -hmm. It more helps with visibility, but I will say from what I have done and from um, watching what some of the other, some other authors have done, uh, it seems like in order to get real traction with or impact with a full price book, like a new release, Mm -hmm. you have to throw a lot of money at it. Yes. And most authors are not in that type of position to do that. And when I say a lot of money, I'm talking like being able to throw like a hundred dollars a day at it Mm -hmm. for like a week. Right. And you can build up that traction and have it be seen enough that, you know, it will kind of give you that longer running, you know, you could cut it off and then have it have that longer running uh, tail on it. Right. But if you're just going to spend like $5 a day for a full price, you're that probably not going to get it seen enough to really make a difference. I um, agree. I think my experience. So Facebook ads for, for newsletter magnets and for first and free are by far the best value for money. I have, like you said, tried them on even yes. 99 cents uh, deals. And I just have not been able to get them to work well enough to unless it's through for read through to be able to be worth the money. Um, but what you were talking mm-hmm. about with where you have the first free and then the next four books or five books are serial books, that's called read through. So measuring mm-hmm. your th- read through yep. and knowing what that is, is important. And there's a couple of tools that you can use to measure read through. Um, you can also see like where your books fall off. And if anybody's interested, we can do a podcast, a podcast about calculating read through and what that means and, and figuring out your sales. But it's important to know those things so that you know what you're spending on advertising. I really feel the mm-hmm. value with Facebook though is building up your newsletter mailing list. So if you have something to offer, even better if it's first and free in a series that you're giving away as your newsletter magnet, you're, then you're getting it twice. You're getting the person on your newsletter so that you have them as readers that you can advertise to in the future through your newsletter, mm-hmm. and you're getting them into the start of a series. So I would actually say if you can combine the two, that's probably going to be the absolute maximum value that you could get for Facebook ads. Now, right now, if you are, if you're looking for a real, like a a, a free version, like say you can't afford to do Facebook ads right away, Mm -hmm. there is a free way to do a reader magnet, newsletter magnet, um, through book funnel, Mm -hmm. which is a, a different, a little bit of a different animal. It's not really, it's not really what I would say traditional digital advertising, Um, The advantage, however, of kind of doing a combination of both of those is that the people who are on or are getting you on book funnel are not necessarily going to be the ones seeing the Facebook ads and vice versa. Right. So I think we could talk about, I think we could throw them into our, our digital advertising book funnel and story origin, but let's hold off on that for a minute and stick with the CPC ads for a second. So Amazon, we talked about a little bit, and I do think that if you are able to advertise on Amazon, there is a potential for advertising different books and series. And the reason I mention that is Mm because you can have one ad where you actually have all of the books in your series on that one ad and Amazon will kind of roll over which books it's being advertised to. And if you can make that ad work, which is challenging because you have to figure out appropriate keywords, and I say really stick to your comps, really stick to your also bots, even within a genre, mm-hmm. let's say you write paranormal romance, right? There's you know, hundreds, of, uh, hundreds of thousands of authors within paranormal romance. You wanna stick to those who sell well, but are also very close to your books. Because if you go off tangent and you have a book that, or an author that does not write like you, that writes in a completely different, you know, subgenre or different tropes, or just has a different stylistic voice, then those ads I've found in my experience do not work as well. The closer that you are to another comp yeah. title, the better off you are on Amazon. 
Have you found that at all, Sherry, with what you've been able yeah. to do? What little bit I've been able to do, yes. Um, but I think that's kind of, I mean, when you think, when you break it down and you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because if you have, say you have a, re, there's a really prolific, well-selling paranormal author out there that you love personally, but say they write vampires and you write shifters, mm -hmm. they're not going to be a good comp for you. Even yep. if they are in paranormal romance, it's not going to be a great idea to target them. You want to find somebody else that writes shifters as well. Um, because it's, you're, you know, just because I like for me personally, I don't particularly like shifter books. Mm -hmm. It's just not my cup of tea, but I do like romance. I do like vampire books. Right. So I can tell you, I like, you know, if I had somebody who, you know, if I got on Amazon and I was looking for paranormal romance and I'm scrolling through and looking, I'm looking for vampire books. I'm not looking for shifter books. And if you're showing me, you know, if the first things that pop up are shifter books, you know, when I go to maybe look up my favorite, you know, like type in my favorite author, the first things it's not going to match. And, you know, hopefully I don't click on your cover. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully I don't be like, oh, you know, this cover looks interesting and click on it because if I do, if it's not real clear, like say it's vague that it's not a shifter book or it may not be a shifter book, it may have vampires in it and I click on it, you get charged for that. Right. You know, you're getting charged for my click. And that's why it's and really I'm important. I'm not going to buy your that book because you can... I don't like shifters. Exactly. The more that you can funnel down on Amazon, the more specific keywords that you could get that are still yeah. relevant, that people are still searching for, I think the, the better off you'll be. And then, of course, there's, there's BookBub. Now, everybody knows BookBub or most people in the book world for their feature deals, their coveted feature deals, which very yes. quickly is their curated lists of readers that you can get a 99 cent deal or a free deal, meaning your book is free or 99 cents and you advertise to their curated list. However, you have to apply for mm -hmm. those deals. They are very expensive and the chances of getting them are slim. Um, not to say that you can't, plenty of people get featured deals. We've used them at, our, at my small press. Um, however, they also have their platform that is CPC, CPM uh, advertising like Facebook and Amazon are. What has your experience been with, with BookPub uh, click ads? <laughs> well, um, not overly positive. Um, not the fact that it doesn't work. It's just, it gets very expensive very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. If you've ever taken a BookBub ad class uh, in which I have, I've sat in on, on virtual conferences, like I, even just last year where, uh, a lady from BookBub was doing a class on how to use BookBub ads. And they very clearly advise you to run a, at least three ads at a time. Mm. Well, the problem is, is that in order for anybody to see your ads, because you're bidding on them, essentially bidding on just like you do on Amazon, you bid, uh, and the people with the highest bid get their ads shown, uh, first or the, you know, in the most prominent relevant places, book, but a book bump is the same way in that respect. The problem is because you're there's so many people trying to get into such a limited space because Amazon's a lot bigger creature. So right. I think it just, you know, it, it balances out a little more. Um, but with BookBub, because it's so curated and I even curated a little more, which is great in theory, but it drives the cost up. Found when a minimum of $5 per ad per day. Um, and with three ads going at a time, that's $15 a day. And they will spend every last time of it. Unlike Amazon, who may not, you know, you can, you can set your ad budget for $10 a day over on Amazon and they may not spend all of it, mm -hmm. but BookBub will most, in most cases spend every dime of it. And so will Facebook. So you have to keep that in mind when you're, you're setting up your ads. I have also found that it's usually not, 
not as worth it to advertise to Amazon readers over on BookBub, just cost wise. Um, if you're going to use BookBub, it really is more beneficial to target non Amazon sites like going after Nook readers, Kobo readers, Google Play readers, um, Apple readers. Uh, and leave if you're going to target Amazon, you're going to you're going to have your money better spent over on Amazon if you can do it that way or even yeah. on Facebook for that matter. I'd agree. Have you had any experience with BookBub ads? When, when they personally? first came out, I've definitely used them. Um, I, I found the same experience as you that the money was used very quickly and that it became very expensive very fast. The other issue, like you said, is. I do think it is good for wide books. However, because it is such a narrow audience, which you think would be good because it's curated, it's especially for their readership. Um, you're also competing against all of their feature deals though, not necessarily in terms of the money that you're spending, but in their lists. So their newsletters will come out yeah. with their deals and your ad will be in it. Kind of like the way that you've seen ads on Amazon when you have that little image in the corner there that's that's an ad um if you mm -hmm. they they do have those amazon ads but when you're doing amazon ads that's not you're not actually putting that picture there it's a different thing that you're doing with their platform but that's kind of what book club mm -hmm. ads are so in this beautiful curated newsletter there's kind of an ad there so if you're thinking about it from a reader perspective who's opening up the newsletter you're less likely in my opinion to click on that ad than you are to one of their deals that they're offering so if um, I think the only if, is if, especially if you're not doing free or 99 cents, right? Absolutely. If you're doing an ad with a book that's free or 99 cents, then you have a shot. Mm -hmm. But if it's a full price book, if say it's a new release or or just a sale, like a you're dropping it down to 299 or something like that, you just. I mean, realistically, the chances of you getting a lot of click through are, is is very is slim and it it does cost a lot of money again i've had i've had authors who can make you know can make good bank over there but again you got to be willing to spend a lot of money to do it a right. lot of money like you're again you're talking probably a hundred dollars a day mm -hmm. in order to um gain some traction and bookbub also like i've been able to again i said i've been able to run the same facebook ad for three years mm -hmm. and it still works. It still gets, gets read through, you know, gets me clicks. It gets me readers. Everything's good. Bookbub. Now they did make a little bit of a change to their algorithm, but before when they originally did it, um, the, the ad that you would do, you had to change it every couple of days, right? Because they would show it so fast, so quickly that it would exhaust it would basically exhaust your readership mm -hmm. and it would stop, just stop working. Now they've changed their, the way they do things a little bit uh, behind the scenes. So it does last a little bit longer, but I have from what I've heard from authors who've used it since that change, um, it still doesn't last more than a couple of weeks at right. most. So you're still looking at having to, it, so it's going to take a lot more effort and time to be monitoring it if you are going to use it. So yeah, know and you that have to going recreate in, those images each time because it's a visual ad that you're creating on BookBub for that purpose. So, you know, and it might be easy to do yeah. in Canva, you might be graphically minded, but it's still another thing that you have to do in order to set up advertising there. So let's talk about, let's switch from these CPC, CPM ads to something that might be a little more budget friendly. And that is advertising through established newsletters. So I'm going to just break that down real quick for some people who might be new. Now, Sherry mentioned Book Funnel, and I'm going to add Story Origin to that platform. Those are specific things that you can set up where you are swapping one to one or in a group setting with authors. And we're, we'll dive into that in a minute. But what we're talking about here is platforms that have established curated newsletter lists for readers, typically based on genre. And BookBub feature deals are the most well-known. After that, I would say that things like Free Booksy yes. slash Bargain Booksy, 
e-reader news today, fussy librarian, uh, ebook soda, just a few off the top of my head, I'm sure Sherry will have more, are where you can pay to have your book sent out to their specific newsletter list on a specific day for a set price. And they could be as low as $10 to as high as I think contemporary romance right now in book club is over $1,000. So it's very dependent on the platform and the genre and how big their newsletter subscriber list is. And you can see usually how many subscribers they have. They give that information out as part of their advertising platform and you submit to them. Uh, Sherry, do you have any particular favorites or any advice on submitting and using them as part of your props release plan or sales plan? <laughs> um, well, release plan, no, um, because I have found very few platforms like new releases, um, especially if those new releases go above $4.99. Mm -hmm. um, they are really great for sales though. Um, mm -hmm. if you're going to do a freebie, free booksy is in my opinion, the best, uh, one of best my bang for your buck. Yep. Um, because I mean, they are significantly cheaper than BookBub. Now, granted, you're not going to get quite the bang as you would the BookBub, but again, when you're comparing cost, mm -hmm. um, last time I checked free booksy was under $200. They are. And like you said, to run a contemporary romance uh, book club feature deal is like a thousand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> if you get 20% of what you would get on a book club, you've made, you know, you've pretty much had a wash there, which I have not found this out of the question mm -hmm. for free book C. So for your money, free book C is really good. Um, especially since I free book C is a lot easier to get yeah. than a book about preacher deal. So you could run a free book C ad every 90 days and, you know, get, keep that traction going, um, without having, and not, without having to basically submit to BookBub and be like, oh, am I going to get it? Am I going to get it? Get it? And then you have to <laughs> wait to see whether you get it in order to, yeah, you got to sit there and pray. Yeah, am I going to get it please, um, before you go out with marketing plan? Right. And you are, I mean, I'm not, you are, you are praying to the newsletter gods to please. Okay. I mean, I know <laughs> me, and so many authors they're lying and they're like sitting here waiting they're like watching their email going am i gonna get it am i gonna get it am i gonna get it it's so it's very nerve-wracking but i mean it, it there's a reason they can do that because i mean it's not out of the question for you know most there have been very few authors that i have talked to who if they got a book bug feature deal have not had enough read through to make their money back. I think that's again important. So even at so a thousand, how dollars. many? But how many books would you say would be? Because you don't, in my opinion, you do not want to apply for a book book feature deal if you have one book out that goes no, to no other books. Mm -mm. The chances of you making return on investment on that are going to be much slimmer, even if it's a ninety-nine cent deal. So right. in my opinion, it's right. best to do book one on a series, but how many books do you think you need out to make that work? A minimum of three, but I'd say four or five three. would yep. be better. Yep. Um, Cause you really do want that. I mean, you need that read through for it to be worth it. And the more read through that you can have the better. Um, and again, my best read through is always my serial series just because of this, the cliffhangers and the see-through. I know there's this big thing. People are like, oh, I hate cliffhangers. I hate serials, but you know what? People read them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they say they hate them, but they read them. If they, if they're good, if the story is good. If the characters are good, they will read them. So Absolutely. as long as you're upfront and honest about the fact that it is a serial, that this is the first book in a series of books, um, I, you know, yeah. I haven't had much problem with it. I mean, 
So I wouldn't stress about it as long as you're, you're open and honest with your readers. It's about building that trust. And Absolutely. So I'll list some works. of the digital advertisers that we just talked about in the description box on our YouTube channel in case any authors out there want to go and check them out for themselves. But let's switch now to what we were talking about, this, this book funnel story origin thing, and perhaps the greatest bang for your buck since you're paying a set price for the platform, either for the month or the year. I think it's yearly rates on book funnel around 150. Mm -hmm. Story origin, I think, is somewhere around the same, maybe a little less. Um, that give you the opportunity to do these newsletter swaps or group promos. So we were talking about yeah. this a bit in the author group, Sherry, and I feel like you had the group promo like down pat. Can you tell a little bit about what a group promo is? Uh, group promos are they're awesome. Can I say that? They're just, yeah. they're awesome. <laughs> especially if you have, especially if you have a freebie, if you have something you're willing to give, a, give away for free, uh, they are just phenomenal. And the reason being is because you band together with a group of authors and it can be five, it can be 30, it can be hundred. Um, but, but book funnel actually allows the organization of that promo for you to all come together and it's divided by genre, uh, heat level, all that stuff is, is all there. There's specialty ones, uh, in the romance category, which is the one I'm in. Um, there's, there's one specifically targeting a uh, billionaire romance. Uh, there's ones targeting office romance. I mean, it, it breaks it down so you can find the ones that are going to target your readers, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of back what we were talking about with Amazon, the more targeted you can get, the better. But you're banding together with these other authors and then they're promoting this, this promo, whatever the time period is, they're promoting it on all their social media sites in their newsletter. So you're being exposed to all of these new readers who are reading your kind of stuff already. Because exactly. they're already following these other authors. And so it's wonderful. And again, it doesn't cost any more than what you're paying for being part of the site anyway. And so you can do as many promos as you want to. You can exactly. do one every week, every month. doesn't matter. And it's phenomenal for, say, a newsletter magnet. Mm -hmm. Because you can put up a a novella, a short story, um, and just put that up on the site and hook that up so that people have to sign up for your newsletter in order to, to get it, join these group promos, and then they spread it all around. And you can build your newsletter again because you're using these targeted group promos, targeting people that are reading your kind of stuff anyway. You're getting the type of readers. You're getting quality readers to your newsletter list that you can actually build, then start building a relationship with and hopefully get to buy your full price stuff. Exactly. So you exactly. particularly, you like, now you like story origin. You have more experience with story origin. I have not used story origin. <laughs> I'm a book funnel girl. So you talk all about story origin and what all it has to offer. So it's interesting because I use Story Origin a lot for the small press and I use Book Funnel a lot more for my personal books. And I, the reason why I like, I like both platforms a lot because in addition to the promos that you can do on there, there's a lot that you can do to actually set up the platform in different ways for your business. One of the things I like on Story Origin is you can have um, reviewers. So you can set up your art team to go to the story mm -hmm. origin platform and it will monitor who has left a review because it sends out reminders to your review team to, hey, leave your review and also make sure that you've added the link to your review on your story origin platform. So it's nice to be able to, to track that and to see who on your ARC teams, and again, because we're a small press, our ARC teams are very large, to see who's actually reviewing. Because as much as we love sending out books to as many reviewers as possible, you want to make sure that people are, are putting the time in to review the book that they're getting. Right. Essentially free. 
And I do believe Book right. Funnel has that feature as well. However, to my knowledge, they do not track or have a way for the reader to put the link in to say mm -hmm. that they've reviewed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you want to track book book funnel does not offer that. Um, I when I was doing my own arc team, uh, where I was sending kind of communicating with my arc team through my newsletter list, I had it as a subset of subscribers on my mm -hmm. newsletter list, and then I was sending out the arc individually. I would use book funnel to send out those arcs uh, partly because they essentially watermark them. Right. Um, so, and they're only allowed to, they only have two weeks to download it. The, their code that they're given only allows it one download. So mm -hmm. it kind of gives a little piracy protection because they can't just say, you know, when Book Funnel sends them the link to download it, they can't just go and, you know, be and like, oh, know. hey, I got this book. Here's here's the link. And yeah, just send out this universal link and just download, you know, you know, have 100 copies downloaded because right. um, they only that link will only allow for one download and it's only good for two weeks. Um, so that's really nice if you want to do that, um, which is part of their gift to book function. Mm -hmm. uh, which again is nice because if say you do a giveaway where you want to gift a book to, you know, as part of the giveaway, then, you know, you can do that through them as well, which it does works the same way. So that's awesome. there's a really lot of great aspects of yeah. book funnel. Again, like you were saying for your bang for your buck, mm -hmm. you know, you really kind of get, you know, you get more for that, but you're just, it's just a different way of marketing. Yeah. Um, and I would say but if, you're, um, just if money is tight with book funnel with the, the newsletter sw swaps, because that's the last part of the digital mm -hmm. advertising that we didn't get to. So in addition to the group promos, right. um, book funnel, and I believe story origin does this too, but I haven't tested it as much has a way for you to swap one on one with another author. Preferably, I would say in your genre, preferably to write books similar to you, you want to find those people. Um, who do that, you can also set up requests that people can submit to you their books or their freebies to swap with. So this would be a thing where you're featuring mm -hmm. their book in your newsletter, your feature and vice versa. And you can say whether you want it to be a featured, meaning you only feature that one book or it's exclusive, I think they call it on, on book funnel, or you can have yeah. it as a mention where you have a few books, et cetera. So you can decide how many books you want to put in your newsletter to, to showcase to your readers. Um, and then you'd make that distinction in book funnel. But I have found that to be a really great way to find readers who are looking for specific books, in my case, alien romance, and even more so like niching down and being able myself as a reader of alien romance to find authors who are like, oh, I want to read their books. Um, because it, it, it is a personal preference, but I do like to at least um, take a look at the book that I'm sending out to my readers and that I'm swapping with to make sure that it's something that I'm comfortable um, sending out to them and, and recommending. But everybody has their own preference on that. But I think it's definitely something that works really well as a form of digital advertising. Have you found that as well? Or do you like the group promos more? Yeah, I mean, it's with the newsletter swaps, it's kind of, it's similar to the group promos in the fact that when people put up a listing for the newsletter swaps, they do tell you um, what kind of people they're, what kind of authors books they're looking for. Like they will tell you they're looking for alien romance books. They're telling you uh, they're looking for, you know, sweet contemporary. I mean, they will, the list in there, you know, what they are. And a lot of times I've even had, I've even seen where they will have covers of their own books mm -hmm. in the, in the ad for, you know, where they're advertising the swap so that other authors can see what type of books they have that they will literally, that they'll then be swapping that they'll have to advertise in their newsletters in exchange because remember a newsletter swap is exactly that it's a swap so not only are you getting you know they're going to advertise 
your book to their readers, you're going to have to advertise it here. So you want to make sure that it's going to be a good fit. You don't want to, again, I wouldn't, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to advertise sweet romance books in <laughs> to my newsletter subscribers. Right. I write, you know, you know, I like, all right, steamy stuff. I did, <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense. They're going to be, my readers are going to be, what, what are you, I, what are you talking about? What, what is this? <laughs> They're just kissing in those things. They're just holding <laughs> hands. Hmm? So, uh, yeah, you, you just got to kind of keep that in mind when you're doing it. Just do your research. It, it takes time. It takes a little bit of time. Um, but I found with all digital advertising pretty much across the board, advertising in general, but digital specifically, since that's what we're talking about, you, you pretty much either have to exchange money or time. <laughs> sometimes both. you know you're you're, you're <laughs> going to sometimes both yes because i mean with, with book bob you're doing both mm -hmm. um with amazon it's more time than it is money yeah. with facebook a lot of times it's more money than it's more time than it or i'm sorry it's more money than it is time mm -hmm. um and with book bub and story origin i think both it's going to be more time than money Yep. Um, the only ones that are maybe a little bit kind of neutral are the newsletter things because those are set prices. You're not you're not bidding. You're not um, you're not paying per click. You're you're just saying they're saying okay. In order to advertise this in our newsletter, this is the flat fee that you're going to have to pay exactly. to get access to our readers. So that's a little more controlled where you can set the money. Um, but on the ones where you actually have to, whether it's cost per click or you're, you're going to have to do any type of active, uh, curating it, you're going to exchange one or the other time or money. Yeah. <laughs> or and I would say if so. you're a debut author or a newer author, perhaps not as many books out book funnel and or story origin is probably where I would invest the dollars in, because again, you're talking about, you have something mm -hmm that is part of the platform. You have a lot of different components of that platform, including these advertising um, streams that you can do through these swaps and group promos. And then as you start to build your catalog, more books are coming out, you're learning more about the different ad platforms, that's when you can kind of start to, to deep dive into things like Facebook, Amazon, BookBub, and even the digital newsletters. Um, if you're running a, a quick sale, mm -hmm. let's say 99 cents or free, and maybe you have one, two, three books out, I would say not with one, even two or three, um, then I would say, okay, you could put some dollars towards those, those newsletters. And then, like I said, all the CPC type of stuff, CPMs come later. That's probably the last on the list once you have yeah. more of an established catalog. Yeah, I, I mean, if you, like I said, if you don't have, I would say if you don't have at least three books out in a series, don't waste your dollars. Advertising <laughs> is, yeah, you're, you're going to be pushing a lot of money to get very little return. Um, it, in fact, if you were just, if you had, you know, one or even two books out, um, and you just want to run a sale, like say on the first book, instead mm -hmm. of doing it free, because Let's be honest, you do it free. You only have one other book to, you know, make any money off of. But right. if you wanted to do a sale, like 50% off sale or something like that, where you're still going to make some money off of it, book funnel or story origin are the best ways to go on that respect because you can you can do it. They have where you they have promos where they're sale promos instead of freebie promos. Mm -hmm. So you can actually target those readers who aren't necessarily, you know, it's not set up to where you have to have a free where you're going to, but you're not also not going to get your newsletter downloads either in order to, if you're in order to get them to, you know, download the book, to get the newsletter sign up, it has to be a freebie, uh, through book funnel. But if you're doing a sale, you want to kind of generate some little bit of things and you're not going to spend any more money than what you would just joining the platform. So that's it's a nice okay. exchange, but it might help get a little bit in, uh, without breaking the bank. So yeah. And of course, so any other platforms, platforms that you can think of though, things? Those are, um, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say those would be, and also those platforms you can use to build up a review team to send books, um, for free mm -hmm. for reviews to different readers. If you kind of want to put that out there, which, which also, 
um, we haven't mentioned, but just as a last little hurrah, uh, Book Sprout, I think is another good one to consider. It's it's also yes. cost money, like NetGalley. Book Sprout and NetGalley are the two. NetGalley is, is more expensive unless you buy into a co-op, but very quickly, those are where you can advertise to have your books for advanced reader copies, meaning you are Yes. putting it on their platform to try to get readers to review your books. Nobody is buying them on those platforms. So just very clear, it's a little different yes. because you're advertising for reviews, yeah. which gets dicey in terms of service. So you always want to make sure that you are, you are clearly on those platforms and, and being clear about what you're doing, but you do pay. So you're not paying for reviews, but you're yeah. paying to be on the platform that would get you readers for reviews. To get the reviews. Yeah, I was wondering if we were going to talk about Book Sprout and NetGalley because they're not they're they're not weird. really digital advertising, but exactly. they're kind of in that same vein. Yeah, you know, we you know, again, <laughs> it's the reviews, so you're you know you kind of need that uh, need to d- clarify that. Although I did Book Sprout did do a lot of uh, recent tweaking, and mm-hmm. I think they are going to begin to do some of the author type promos that books book funnel and story origin are offering. It does seem that, but way, not yeah. in this exact same way. That's still kind of an up in the air thing. Mm-hmm. Um, however, book spell does, uh, does do kind of similar to story origin where they will send out reminders to the reviewers that have signed up. So they do kind of help monitor that uh, which is helpful from an author's perspective, especially once you get to a certain point in your career. Um, if you only have one book, it's not as big of a deal because you're only tracking one book. You only have one right. book sales that you're trying to follow. And you know your but newsletter subscriber list probably isn't huge. I will say with book sparks though, they do have um, the option to, I think Story Origin does as well, but they're to me, Story Origins public platform is not as large as, as Book Sprouts is, where you can put mm-hmm. it out to their public readership, meaning that anyone can request right. the review copy to read. And then um, mm-hmm. it's it's whether you approve that person or not, or whether Book Sprout has approved them or not. There's a couple different ways to do that. But if you would like to mm-hmm. learn more about these platforms of how to do advanced reader copies, we're more than uh, happy to do a podcast on getting reviews. If that's something you're interested, again, let us know in the comments. But I think we have exhausted digital advertising, Sherry. We are I was gonna say we've kind of covered a lot of territory. We always do in these podcasts. So we just we just go out go out there. Um but um we thank you for listening and I hope that you will tune in next week for the next episode of Bound by Books. Bye. Bye everybody. Wait, before you go, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check us out on our website, foundbybookspodcast.com.